The forest is weeping. Its misty tears are a smoke result of industrialization. They want me to leave the forest. My mist is slowly becoming a mystery of misery. What remains is heavily altered. They have smoked me out in the name of industrialization, a peculiar practice that the 1960s brought to life. About 72% of my original 1,450 million kins of the tropical forest have been marshaled to other uses. The symphony of deforestation rates for the humid tropics is estimated to have pitched to a melancholic dirge of 6.9 million at the end of the 1970s. The off-key rendition doubled the trouble to 14.8 million hectare by 1991. There is the story of the phoenix, of the Egyptian bird that jumps into the fire, burns itself and comes back in a refreshed way. Our story is the story of the phoenix and the multiple phases of learning. And okay, that is the process of science, that the theories we had were not quite appropriate. And we, we came back with a new, in a new form, tried new things. It, it has been a remarkable journey. The alternative to Slash and Burn partnership was formed in the early 1990s at a time of great environmental awareness and pressing needs to do something about the alarming rates of deforestation, particularly in the developing and tropical parts of the world. When we burn an area forest, we say goodbye to 98% of the carbon, 96% of the nitrogen, 76% of the sulfur, and approximately 50% of the potassium and phosphorus. Goodbye. It's only sulfur that comes back in rain. Everything else is lost. And that is an enormous loss of natural capital. From Brundtland Conference to Rio in 1992, there were lots of issues coming up on environmental degradation, forest degradation, looking at pollution, looking at all sorts of environmental problems. Within Agenda 21 in Rio, there were some resolutions about reducing deforestation, but also the fact that reducing deforestation was not a simple issue. It had to do with that competition between development, poverty reduction, getting an income, producing food, producing fuels, producing fiber for the populations of the growing populations of the world, and maintaining forests that are important for biodiversity, important for water regulation, and important for climate maintaining. Uh, regulating our climate. So ASP has been about finding compromise solutions, looking at alternatives that can help us to, to, to maintain a balance at the tropical forest margins between development, food production, but also keeping forest for the biodiversity. The story of ASP starts with the, the tremendous concerns that were expressed in the conventions at that time. Now forests was an issue that was getting a lot more attention because the environmental problems of deforestation were reaching the highest levels of concern around the world. And ASB was a reaction to that. ASB stands for Alternative to Slash and Burn. But at some point we renamed ourselves to say we are the ASB Consortium for the Tropical Forest Margins. Because slash and burn has these multiple interpretations and some people would think when they see that that we try to blame this small shift in cultivators for the problems. So we, we found it relevant to focus. We are a partnership, we are working south, it's south south cooperation, it is linking the countries where these things happen. So we are a partnership for the tropical forest margins. We try to find solutions within that space of environment, sustainability and development. And we are a platform where new ideas can emerge, where the national systems that look for technologies within their own constraint can share lessons, and where we can jointly look at the more policy implications and try to develop new ways to analyze these problems, new ways to think about it, and bring it into the global conventions, bring it into the debates that we have the problems of deforestation are multiple. It's very easy to blame smallholders who 
cut small areas and move on. But it's a very complex situation involving forest concessions, national governments, indigenous peoples, needs of urban consumers, the growing pressing need for agricultural land. And complex problems need well differentiated and owned solutions. And therefore, it was about bringing together national partners, national governments, international players, and groups that could develop new knowledge, new policies around those. And that was how the ASB partnership was formed. The role of ASB in the theory of change was that we, we framed an initial theory of change, saying that this agricultural intensification would by itself bring all these other benefits. But when we were looking at it, we found that the data didn't quite agree. So we had to change the theory of change. It's been a long journey, it's been a learning experience for ASB. But we've moved from the idea that if you intensify agriculture along the tropical forest margin, so bringing technologies that will make agriculture more productive, then automatically people will get more food and then so would not clear more forest. But then we quickly learned that intensification itself is not sufficient. It is necessary, but it's not sufficient. We need to have other complementary policies like forest protection that actually stops people from clearing certain parts of the forest um, at the same time as we intensify. But also then we found out that in general, forest protection is expensive for our governments, but there are other options that have come up which we've worked on along the lines of investment in forest because forest are also important for climate, for example, for water, for biodiversity. ASB has rather a unique and special group of scientists because they don't just discover and build up that body of knowledge, they want to see it put into action. So it's about combining the science of discovery with the science of delivery, trying to understand how that knowledge can lead to better actions. When we look back at the results of ASB, we can say that we have actually helped to shape the way we think about boundary work, the way we can think about this negotiation support, that it is not about science finding a good solution and then the rest of the world applying it. That science has to be done together with the action on the ground and that it is these multiple stakeholders, multiple objectives. At the same time, landscapes can be multifunctional and should be multifunctional. The success of the alternative to slash and burn has largely been a change in mindset, a change in understanding of how we manage forests, particularly tropical forests, inside a wider land use concept. The groundbreaking and innovative project, reducing emissions from all land uses, combined what is happening in individual forest areas with adjacent agricultural lands, wetlands, pastures and rangelands. And that way of looking at the world in that wider landscape context has been taken up by many other groups now. The Forest Landscape Restoration, the Global Landscape Forum, um, the Net Zero Land Degradation. And so what ASB has successfully done over the last 20 years is to, to be able to tease out the problems, prioritise them, get attention addressed to them by all of the stakeholders and then look for combined solutions, negotiated solutions, where we combine that knowledge with political power and the aspirations of all of those different groups. ASB has been successful at very different levels. The first one is demonstrating to the world that you can bring several disciplines, several institutions at international level, at country level, at policy level, at national level, but also local NGOs to work together in a very smooth way. The second success story of ASB, I think, is the fact that we've been able to deliver a lot of new knowledge and new evidence on a very precise subject that is so complex to the world. Um, I think we've had some tools like the ASB metrics that has been used widely and applied widely. I think we've been able to bring our research through some methods that have been taken up by globally recognized institutions 
like the World Bank, we work with the World Bank to develop a, a methodology for analyzing opportunity costs. I think we've been able to bring forth this sort of boundary object, this, this very important instruments, tools, you know, knowledge, evidence that has been taken up by policy institutions, by governments, and I think we've been able to have a very strong uh, um, success. 1,000 publications in 20 years, scientifically solid publications, a lot of policy briefs that we translated to, for policymakers to understand. And as I look forward uh, into the future, what I would like to do is challenge my colleagues in ASB to think a lot more about the original roots. Because indeed, um, in a continent like Africa, where the humid tropical forest is under threat and there is enormous areas where millions and millions of farmers are striving to make a living by growing crops, by uh, cutting down a humid tropical forest. We are working with the farmers at the benchmark uh, sites. We are working with scientists. We are working with um, national systems supported by governments from our national research uh, institutes. CIAT has been a partner with ASB since its founding, so uh, we've had a very strong relationship for almost 20 years. CIAT's message um, to ASB is that we think this partnership um, needs to go on for another 20 years. The farmers are looking up to us. They want best use of their agricultural lands and they don't want to go to the forest. So ASB, give the farmers what they want. I think we're still the phoenix bird and we have to still jump into the fire once in a while and to renew ourselves. And, and it's difficult to say how we will come out of the next fire. 